गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल आई एम शिवांश वैष्णव रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट इंजीनियर इन टेम्सम्स इंस्ट्रूमेंट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट यू वेबिनार ऑन बेसिस ऑफ हीट फ्लक्स सेंसर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट इज गो थ्रू अबाउट वट पायरोटेक ग्रुप इज सो पायरोटेक ग्रुप कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री डिविजन पैनल डिविजन थर्मल एंड केबल डिविजन एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिविजन सो टेम्सम्स कम्स अंडर थर्मल एंड केबल डिविजन Uh, in uh, in thermal and cable division there are various division which have tensions marathon heaters ast pt tensions asia jaya tensions gmbh tensions gulf etc now let us discuss the business areas of tensions in 2024 like in tensions the temperature sensor which are manufactured by tensions ast and equipped have a market share of 48% whereas the cables which are manufactured by tensions have a market share of 34% and the heating solutions uh, which is manufactured which are given by marathon tensions and tensions have a market share of 18% tensions group consists of total 800 employees worldwide with total of 52 million us dollar sales we have over 6500 customers across the globe with 40 plus years of experience and still counting we have done sales in over 75 countries across the globe with total five global location which i will discuss in the further slide till now we have been awarded by 12 patents and we have approximately 30% year over year ratio growth so now uh, as i told you earlier now let us discuss about our revenue market areas in year 2022 so uh, in north america we have a revenue per market of 4% in europe we have 15% of the market share in india we have 61% of the market share and you can see in south america we have 2% in africa and middle east we have 5% of the market share and in area asia pacific which is, uh, which is india we have 13% of the market share heat flux sensors i will start from the basic like what is heat and what is and what makes it different from temperature as you can see here heat is a form of thermal energy and heat always flows from high temperature region to low temperature region whereas temperature is the in intensity of heat as you can see the temperature tells us how hot or cold the object is but whereas heat always flows from high temp high energy or what from sorry from high temperature region to low temperature region which is a form of thermal energy as you can see the block here, block here is in a cold uh, colder region and the red arrows shows that heat is flowing from high temperature to the block now there are basically three modes of heat transfer first is conduction second is convection and the third is radiation conduction is the process in which heat is transferred from hotter part of or to the colder part in a body without involving any actual movement of the particles or you can see the molecules as you can see here there is a flame and there is a hand holding a, a rod as you can see here so uh, as the temperature arises by the flame the heat slow by slow time by time moves towards hand so this is the mode of conduction and the convection is a process in which the heat is transferred in the liquid and gaseous form from a region of higher temperature to the lower temperature as you can see here it, it is uh, as you can see the hand which is over the flame the heat is transferred with the help of air so it is a mode of convection now comes the radiation radiation is a transfer of thermal energy in the form of electromagnetic waves the basic or the you, you can say the least example is the food that is uh, that is stored in the microwave oven is heated with the help of radiation what is heat flux as written over here amount of heat which is transferred per unit area per unit time from or to a surface is known as heat flux as you can see this is the higher temperature region over here and this is my lower temperature region so my heat will flow from higher temperature region to lower temperature region at this is so i have a block which have a unit area unit area means the uh, value of area is 1 and the and in 0 to 1 time you you can see in total 1 second or 1 minute the heat which will flow from higher temperature region to lower temperature region is known as heat flux 
So it is the basic meaning of heat flux. Now this is the question arise that why we need to measure heat flux. So consider there is a room. One part of the room is made up of bricks and cement, and the other part is made up of stainless steel. Now I have to install AC in both the rooms. Now I have to uh, I have to determine that what ton of AC is required in bricks and cement part and what ton of AC is required in stainless steel part. Now I have two persons sitting alone in the room, and the outside temperature of the room is 50 degrees Celsius. As we discussed, that the heat will flow from outside 50 degree, which is high temperature, to inside, which which is room temperature, which is 27 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, the heat is moving from outside temperature to inside temperature. Now, I, when I place my heat flux sensor, I, I I got a reading that the part which is made up of bricks and cement have low heat coming, and the part which is made up of stainless steel have high heat coming. So then I get to know that like, okay, I have to install high ton of AC, which is two ton in my stainless steel room, and lower ton of AC, which is one ton in the bricks and cement. Now, uh, now you have an idea that why we need to measure the heat flux. As you can see, we can all sense temperature, like how hot or how cold the object is, and how it changes. And this is all due to the heat flux that we previously explored. But measuring temperature tells us about one half of the story. And measuring heat flux will tell you the complete story. It, measuring heat flux leads to better understanding of the thermal situation, as we discussed earlier. That uh, I have to, I have get that uh, the room which is made up of stainless steel will be heated more, so I I get a better understanding of the thermal situation over there. Now, I, now I will tell you the basic principle, and you can say how heat flux sensor works. So consider there is a heat flux sensor. It is my heat flux sensor, which is known as transducer or it is connected with a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And the positive and the negative terminal is connected to a voltmeter. As you can see, that there is no heat source in front of my heat flux sensor. So the voltmeter will tell me 0 millivolts or no voltage output. But when I install a heat source in front of it, then some amount of radiative, convective heat will flow. And then my voltmeter will tell some millivolt output. So for example, I got uh, I have a sensor of sensitivity 3.053, and when I place it in front of the heat source, the reading of the voltmeter is 5.05 millivolts. When I need to measure my heat flux quantity, I will multiply both of them. I will multiply sensitivity by the reading of voltmeter, which is 5.05 volts. Then I get to know that okay, the my heat flux value is 15.76 watt per centimeter square. So uh, heat flux measurement, you can say, is the change in temperature brought by its effect on the sensor. And the amount of heat transferred to the surface area is converted into electrical signal, which was 10 millivolt, as we discussed earlier. And here, the transducer, which I tell you, is a heat flux sensor. And to absorb heat, the sensor has a black absorbent coating over it. What are the basic types of heat flux sensors which are made in Thamesons? There are, first, garden gauge. Second, skimmed bolter, and third one is thin thin heat flux sensor. So this is the garden gauge heat flux sensor, and you can and also it is a it is also skimmed bolter, and it is a thin film heat flux sensor. So what garden gauge is? So garden gauge heat flux sensors are used for high range of heat flux measurement. So the basically the ranges are 10, 30, 50, 70, 90 watt per centimeter square. And they both, uh, and it comes in cooled as well as uncooled type of sensor. In cool sensor, there is water which is flowing in the sensor, and in uncooled sensor, there is no water flowing in front of it. And and it the garden gate heat flux sensor can measure both radiative as well as convective heat flux. Uh, there is a window in front of a heat flux, and when I uh, measure the heat flux with the help of window, it will show me radiating radiation measurement, or you can say radiative heat flux. And when I use my sensor without window, it will show me radiation, radiation as well as convection heat flux. Now I have skimmed bolter heat flux sensor, which is used for low range of heat flux measurement. And it comes in the range of 1, 2.55 watt per centimeter square. And it also comes in cooled as well as uncooled type of sensors. 
and it can also measure both radiative as well as convective heat flux. We have thin film heat flux sensor, which is of very high sensitive, and it is a contact type heat flux sensor, which measure conductive heat flux, which we'll discuss earlier. The mode of the first mode of heat transfer that was uh, uh, that was produced by a rod that is convective uh, conductive heat flux, which this thin film heat flux sensor can measure, and it can measure up to 10 watt per centimeter square. Currently, this project is under research and development uh, department. Now we have a in-house calibration setup, which will which is used to calibrate or to measure that the heat flux which is coming is right or not. Is there any uh, is there any uncertainty, uh, uncertainty in my heat flux sensor or not? So to measure or you can say to calibrate uh, garden gauge and schematic water, we have fast scale. It is a device which uh, measure or we, you can say which calibrate my garden gauge and schematic water heat flux sensor and for thin flame heat flux sensor, we have a device which is namely known as heat flow meter. Now, uh, so uh, we, as we come to the last slide that uh, we have made a heat flux sensor, we have understand the basic principle of it. Now, where to use it? It is the main question that where to use uh, this kind of heat flux sensor. So these are used by fire academy or for educational purpose. There is a cone calorimeter uh, calibration which use this heat flux sensor. Now we have human and equipment exposure to heat. Like the, uh, what is the variable amount of heat that a person can uh, face? Or you can say if there is a boiler, then what is and at what distance the, the heat is uh, at what distance and what amount of heat is coming so that the persons which is standing in front of that boiler can bear that heat, can bear that amount of heat. Now we have welding torch heat flux sensor measurement. And you can see this is a, uh, this heat flux sensor is also used in making battery thermal runaway and fire projects. And uh, in forest fire research, we also use heat flux sensor. And for full scale fire testing, we also use this kind of heat flux sensor and for fire monitoring also. Thank you.